Human behaviour is complex. Everyone's heading in different directions and interacting with different people along the way. And this is becoming increasingly true for healthcare interventions as much as for anything else. While some interventions might just involve taking a pill, others involve a number of interacting components delivered by different people and targeted at different organisational levels. So how are we to describe these complex interventions in a way that allows other researchers or health professionals to replicate them? We wanted to develop a graphical method to help with this. Different audiences will likely need different things from a description, but our focus in particular was on describing the connections between those involved in delivering the intervention. For example, here's a primary investigator who is delivering an intervention for a clinical trial. She trains a number of health professionals at the next level to deliver the intervention to a common standard. Each of the health professionals then delivers the intervention to patients at the third level. Suppose that patients are treated in groups. Each patient gets input from a health professional, but also from other patients in their group, which we have indicated using a circular arrow at the lowest level. These inputs combine or interact to produce a health benefit. We can unclutter the diagram by separating out the information showing the relationships between actors at different levels. The circulating arrow at the bottom shows the patient-to-patient -patient contact and the level within which it occurs without having to depict more than one patient. What we're left with is a diagram showing the flow from the source of the intervention at the top down to the patient who receives it at the bottom. This simple idea is the basis for the cascade diagram. We simply replace the figures with schematic elements that we can label. We can take this further and show treatment arms in a clinical trial. Here's a simple example with participants randomised to two groups. Randomisation is indicated with a shaded banner behind the two kinds of participant. An intervention participant, who receives the intervention from the investigators, and a control participant, who receives routine care. Active intervention components can be described in a separate key. This more complex example shows how an individually randomised design can lead to contamination in something like a general practice setting, where patients at the same practice share information about the care they receive. The information is shown circulating within the bounds defined by a practice. Because there are control and intervention participants at the same practice, this circulating flow provides a route through which the active intervention can pass to, or contaminate, control participants. One solution is to cluster randomise the trial at the practice level, which prevents the contamination Richard mentioned. If we assume that the flow of information does not extend between practices, then the circulating flow amongst control participants is isolated from the flow amongst intervention participants. Cascade diagrams will come into their own when describing much more complex interventions. They're useful at the design stage, in protocols, and in reports of completed trials. The more people can understand what other researchers have done, the more likely they are to reproduce, cite, and discuss this work, and ultimately the more impact it will have. We hope Cascade Diagrams will go some way towards helping you with this complex task.